What's up, Foundation? What's up, you two? It's me, your big partner, Cartoon 5-3. Man, I'm back again, man. Back again. Story time? Yes, it is. But before we go off into the story, um, for my paid subscribers, y'all know I'm going to hit y'all with something again this coming Monday, the 18th. Um, tell y'all a story that, uh, I really didn't want to tell before it had, cro you, it, it had crossed my mind several times, uh, over the last two years, if I should tell it or not. Um, I had kind of shied away from it, uh, because it was, a. Uh, it, it, I had a little sore spot in me, now, I, I, but I'm going to tell it, though. I'm, I'm going to give it to my paid subscribers uh, this coming Monday, the 18th. Uh, this is a story about when the Crips and the Disciples got into it in the maximum security prison in Alabama. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a hard time telling that one, man. I'm gonna have a hard time telling that one because um, I got I got some real close partners that got messed off in that in that in that type get down right there. Um, I lost I lost some partnerships for some dudes that I was real tight with when I was in that prison where it took place at. But anyway, for the paid subscribers, man, y'all be there, and I'm going to give it to y'all, man. Y'all going to have to bear with me because, uh, you know what I'm saying, I'll go through a myriad of emotions telling that story. But anyway, on to this one. On to, back to this one. Uh, as you can tell from the title, this is one of them, this is one of them stories where I stepped up. And I prevented a problem that could have that could have resulted in some real, real bad uh, bloodshed. It could have really resulted in some real bad uh, bloodshed, man. Um, and it was all about something that I had created. Okay, now you know, sitting in prison, you know, dudes will come up with all type of stuff, will create all type of stuff. Now this is one of them this is one of them days, this is one of them stories about when I had created something. Now, when I was in uh a different maximum security prison in back in like 97, uh one of my cool, cool partners, it was two dudes that I was real cool with, two white guys that I was real cool with, man. And I told you the story about uh about my partner named Grip. Gripping there with life without never going home, you know, cuckoo, cuckoo for cuckoo pup for cocoa puffs, killed up everything he can get his hands on in Huntsville. But anyway, so they say. But anyway, uh, me and him used to we uh create stuff together. Me, him, and another little dude named uh Betts, Mike Betts, and um, shout out to Mike Betts, man. And um, we this is this these are the two guys. When I told you I wrote the book, I wrote a fantasy book, and we got it published. But anyway, years, years, and years go by. Years, years, and years go by. And um, I'm in another maximum security prison. So anyway, I had created a game called Dog Track. Dog Track. Now, Dog Track was a game... That was fun. Everybody wanted to play it. It became so popular till it got to the point to where it was gambling going on. On the dog track. On the dog track. Okay, now, I'm going to explain to you what dog track was. I created this game now. Now, what dog track is, you take it's uh you take these big old uh sheets of of uh white cardboard like like drawing cardboard uh we buy you can buy them off the canteen and um you know you know dudes in prison make a lot of cards you know what i'm saying make their homemade uh 
birthday cards, wedding cards, anniversary cards, all that. <clears throat> you would buy this hard kind of paper that you can fold and, you know, do your thing with. Sheets are real long, real long. I would say each sheet would be about, uh, maybe about three feet long, I'm guessing. Boom. Okay, so now what I, what I did, I took two sheets and made them real long. Now, at the end, bang, I glued them together. So now, three feet turned into maybe five and a half feet, six feet, you know, something like that. I'm not real 100% sure how long it was, but it was it was between five to six feet long. And so now, once you put it together, now you made seven lanes. You got seven different lanes. The lanes were about, maybe about that wide. And in each lane... It was uh, 200 squares. Now, squares in, in the long lanes, you took a line and you took, a, um, let me see. Uh, it was like long lanes and then you just go across it till it's, you know, 200 squares from this, from the word go on this end all the way down till you get to this end. It's 200 squares. Now, each square was about as big as... Ha, uh, maybe a little bit bigger than a, a top, you know, a bottle cap top, you know, that made like twist on sodas, the bottle cap top, a little bit uh, about that size or maybe just a tad, tad bit bigger. Okay. And the board was made up real colorful. It was real. You know what I'm saying? I'm just giving it to you in the Spartan sense, but it was made up with, with detail. It was dry. It was painted around the board now, and it just looked real good, you know, dark lines, you could tell had the starting line, boom, had down here on the end, had the finish line, bang. Had the winner circle at the end. Now, at the end, the winner circle was a big circle. I'm going to tell you what went into the winner circle. <clears throat> okay, so now, here it is. Each square had, I mean, each lane had a, a myriad of different traps. Um, You had, you had, if you landed on a certain square, that had a certain number or a certain letter. You would have to pull a card. You had you had a you had a uh, you had card. You had you had stacks of cards over here. Each stack of cards had certain stuff written on them. So now, if you landed if you landed on a a square that had maybe it had an arrow, boom, that said that was instead of pointing this way to the end of the the track to the finish line, it had an arrow pointing back to the start line. So now if you landed on that square, you would reach over, you would reach over to the cards. Now it was a deck of cards, a regular deck of cards. Now the only, only thing is the big joker and the little joker was in there. Okay. So now you, if you landed on a, a square that had an arrow pointing back to the start line, you would reach over uh, and pull a card. Say like you pull the number three. So that means you had to go back three squares. You, whatever number you pulled, that was the amount of squares you had to go back. You know what I'm saying? If you had a, if you landed on the arrow point toward the finish line, you'd pull a card. Uh, you, whatever number you pulled, two through ten, or even the face cards. The face cards were automatic ten squares, ten you know ten jumps. So whatever you pulled. Boom, say you pulled a nine, you went up nine squares, and then it would go to the next person, next person, next person. So you had the arrows that was sending you back however many squares. You had the arrows that was pointing this way, sending you up however many squares. Um, You had pitfalls to where if you landed on a certain square, you lose a turn. Um, Boom, if you landed on a certain square, you got to pull again. You know what I'm saying? You you got to pull again. Um, if you if you landed on a certain certain squares that you could land on, you could boom. If you landed on it, you could automatically point to any other player in the game and have them pull a card to send them backwards. You know. So um, you had you had that type of stuff. Then, like I said, you had uh, you had you had where you could land on a certain square. And it was an automatic win square to where, well, it wasn't automatic. You would, If you landed on this square, 
you'd go pull a car and it was three cars in there in 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 this other deck, not the regular deck of car, but in this other made up deck to where if you pull it and it says automatic win, game over. You automatic won. Or if you landed on one, you had one that said automatic lose. If you pulled that car, automatic loss. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Go up, go back. Uh, different numbers. Automatic loss, automatic loss. Um, let me see. Lose a turn. You had you had squares that'll make you lose a turn. You had squares that'll give you another turn. Stuff like that. And it was man, I tell you, it was fun. So you had little pieces, little bitty pieces about this big. I, they were made out of uh, toilet paper. You take toilet paper, you soak it, get it real wet. When you take it out, squeeze the water out. You you can shape and mold it into whatever little piece of whatever whatever design you want it to be. Like when I used to be in the shoe in Pelican Bay, that's how I would make my chess pieces. I had I had some of the coldest chess boards you ever want to see when I was in Pelican Bay. Um, all my, you know, my pieces was made up tall, nice thick pieces. Boom! I sit at the gate. And, um, you know, play play the homies or play the essays chess over the tier. But anyway, back to this. So listen, you had you had um, you had different pieces, different colors. Um, some was like black and white or, you know, because you, you had, you know, you had you had you had you had the red piece, the blue piece, the green piece, the black piece, uh, the brown piece. Um, however many pieces, but it was seven of them. And so. It got so fun to where people started gambling. It was it it was a bag of coffee or a pack of tops. For those out of state who don't know what a pack of tops is, a pack of rolling tobacco, tops, bugler, stuff like that. You get a little pack. Now, for a pack of top or a, or, or a bag of coffee, that was your entry into the game. That is what you put. You set it down at the end in the winner's circle. You set that down at the end in the winner's circle. So now look, everybody would start and boom. Um, this is how we would pick to see who go first. We had numbers like we would take the dominoes and you had blank one, blank two, blank three, all the way to blank six. Then you had uh, six one, which was seven. And you know, reach, you'd shake them up in a little beanie. You reach in there. Oh man, I got, I got, I got a zero three. That means you go third. So boom, once you start, okay, you you just reach out and pick the card. Now you got 200 squares, so it wasn't it didn't go that fast. You know, it was fun. You didn't want it to end that fast because you got your money on this. You know what I'm saying? You got your money on this. And each each you know each lane had the same amount of traps, had the same amount of uh, gifts, had the same amount of go up, go back, but they were staggered in different spots. In each lane, you know what I'm saying? In different spots in each lane, they were staggered. Now you had you had one little spot where it was like two different squares and it was painted all the way blue. Um automatic, if you landed in the blue, that means you landed in the water. That means you landed in the water. So now if you landed in the water, we had two pair of dice. We had a pair of dice, little homemade dice. You would have to shake these dice. You had, you had, you had three chances to roll the dice. You had to, you had to roll, you had to roll a uh, eight or better, a uh, eight or better to come out the water. After the three rolls, if you didn't roll eight or better, you were stuck in the water until it was your turn again. Okay, cool. So now, if we would start, everybody would come out. Now, it was to the point to where, man, listen, dudes was like, man, Toon, you bringing the game out? Because, you know, at the end of the night, I'd roll it up, take it back in the cell. So it was to the point, man, Toon, cuz, bring the game out, man, bring the game out. I'm like, I'm bringing it. You know, I had all the utensils. Um, it was sometimes like if I was getting ready to go to the yard, I had, you know, certain little partners that would want <clears throat> to come get the game. Toon, um, you finna go to the yard? I'm like, I'm going to the yard, homie. Hey, can I get the game, man? I'll I watch it. I'm, I'll be responsible. And by, and I would, you know, yeah, go ahead. And they would be responsible for the game. So anyway, one of these nights hit. It was on a late night. Man, we had been playing, I'd say it was about 12 something, 12 something night. So we playing. They had just counted or whatever. Boom. 
Next count, one going to be till two in the morning when we lock down. So I got the game out on the table over there, on the big table, the long table. And see, the thing is, it was so exciting that not, not just the people who were invested in the game that was playing, but you had everybody else standing around rooting and cheering and ooing and eyeing and, you know what I'm saying, the whole hookup. They was really, really into this game. It was really fun. Man, the dog track, you know. And so here it is. It got, it, you know, when you got money in something, when you in, invested your money, you gambling, everything gets serious. Ain't no more play play. Everything is serious now. You know what I'm saying? So I had to always be there to oversee the game. Um, I didn't, I mean, they didn't get to move the pieces because Negroes going to cheat. People going to cheat, man. They going to cheat. Especially a bunch of fools in prison. Yeah, they going to cheat. So when you pulled your card, I would see the number. I don't have a dog in the fight. So if you pull the three or five or whatever, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five. I moved it. So could nobody, you know, accuse him of cheating, accuse him of cheating. I'm moving the pieces the whole time. The whole time. And so it got to the point to where, you know, I started making me a little sum off of it because now when you come out, you got six bags of coffee or, you know, six whatever. You got seven whatever in there. Seven people, all of them put their money in to get in the game. All right. I automatically get one at the end of the game because it's my game. I made the game. I put all my blood, sweat, and tears into hooking this game up. And I'm running the game. I'm overseeing it, keeping everything straight and calm. So, of course, yeah, I have to be compensated for, you know, my game. All right, cool. So now the winner got six bags of coffee. I got one. Every game, the winner going to get six. They put in one. You put in one in lieu of trying to win six bags. Put in one bag. Boom. You win six. I get one. Simple. Cool. What no problems. Everybody agreed with it, and it was it was high old silver away. Man, one night we playing on a late night, about 12 something. We playing. So look, um, I never forget, we got a good game going. We got a good game going. And we had one dude in there, he had been playing, and he kept hollering, man, I gotta win this game. He done won a few times. He's pretty good at it. Lucky, he was lucky. Because this game is pure luck. There's no skill, period, to this game. There is nothing but pure luck because you're pulling a card, turning it up, and whatever it say, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we would have to shuffle the deck once or twice. So, boom. Um, now, um, the big joker and the little joker was automatic 10 spaces up and another pool. Automatic. Automatic 10 spaces up and another pull. Okay. So now we got that. We got that going. <clears throat> the ace, any ace, there's four aces in the deck. Any ace was 12. Any ace was 12 squares. Any face card was 10 squares. Then the numbers, one through 10, whatever the numbers read. Okay. So, you know, it, it was ugly, man. It was ugly if you pulled, if you pull, if you, if you had to pull a card to see how many squares you're going back and you pull one of them face cards uh, and had to go back 10 spaces. I've seen dudes get all the way, if they in the wrong lane, get all the way to the end. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about they might be three squares from winning it all. And if they in one of them lanes that got that, 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 that draw, whatever, and go back. I seen a dude, man, get all the way. He was in that. He was in that fifth lane, and that and the and the last square before you win had the draw card to go back. And the dude, I seen the dude. He finna win it all. It ain't no. It ain't. It wasn't nobody within uh, fifteen squares of this cat. He hit that. He hit that last little piece, man. He thought he had the game in the bag, and it sent him back. Bang! When he drew up, he drew a card. And it sent him back eight squares. When he went back eight squares, he landed on a card that he had to pull over here. Pull, you know, go here to this pool. And he pulled the card, automatic loss card. This cat here, man, he was beside himself about that. You know what I'm saying? But it was fun. It was exciting. So look, we playing one night. 
we playing one night and um guy was out there yeah i guess he was you know he was on his last he was on his last y'all so anyway we playing we playing we playing and he lost he had been arguing with a dude on the sideline the whole night. He he didn't play three, four different, you know, three different different games that night. He played four, like three, four times straight. Boom. So now you know, like I said, you got the peanut gallery on the sideline saying whatever they saying, doing whatever they doing. You know what I'm saying? You know, can't tell no man what to say. You know, not in prison. You can you 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 can make him. If you're bad enough. So anyway, he lost. Now, anybody that gambled know when you gambling and you losing your money, man, you don't want to hear nothing from the sideline, the side busters, the peanut gallery. You don't want to hear that. That's one of the quickest ways to get into some drama, especially in prison. The man lost. So now it was one dude on the sideline. They had been going back and forth all night, go all night, all night, all night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude kept speaking on his money. So that's the first thing dude's gonna say when they gambling and somebody who don't have a dime invested is on the sideline woofing. Hey man, stay up out my mix, homie. You ain't got no money in this. You don't have nothing invested in this. I got my money on this. You speaking on my money, man. Raise up off of that. You know. Some going to listen, some ain't. This cat wasn't going to listen. Neither one of them was scary. So, you know, they was heading for Boot Hill. One of them or both of them. Or, you know, none of them or whatever. But anyway, so, man, when the, when the, when the dude, uh, I'm, I never remember, white dude won. White dude won. Slick, too. And um, the cold part about it, he was, he was my partner. White dude was a crip, too, y'all. White dude was a crip. I know I, now a lot of y'all be asking me too. Um, was it white Crips in Alabama? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. You know what I'm saying? We had them. Cause you know, um, now what used to trip me out was when I seen a white GD. Now the, now that you know what I'm saying, GDs and BDs and all that, they didn't really play that too much. Cause we used to wonder how the heck a white boy gonna be in a pro black gang. You know what I'm saying? But I've seen it. I've seen it. So now you know when I first got locked up out there, they man, tune do uh do uh man, can a white boy be a crib? And I would tell him, yeah, he can. You know, we got we got a gang. I I got I got I got a, I, got, I got white homies. That's Crips in LA. Yeah, we don't hey man, cripping is not a black or white thing. Cripping is a blue thing, homie. Remember that. We don't care what race you are. Period. If you down for the cause, you down for the cause, homie. Straight up. So anyway. The uh the, the white homie here won, so now them two dudes they go to getting into it. They go to get I'm talking about they go to getting into it bad. They go to getting into it real bad. To the point they was like, okay, F N. Y'all know what a F N mean. They love that word in Alabama. F U C C N I G G A. Eh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So now when them type words go to getting slung back and forth, and they're off. It's finna be some some get down for the get down. And and they was finna be some get out for the get out. One went left and the other one went right. They was on their way on their way to the sales to get their knife. You got one dude he mad because you because he didn't got talked too crazy. You got the other dude he mad because he done lost his last little coffee in the game. So now they pride in the way. It'd be a pride thing, man. That's one thing about prison, man. You lose your life behind pride. Behind pride. Then you know when you're sitting in lockup forever. Now, now you done thought about it. You're like, dang, I wish I wouldn't have did that. But hey, it is what it is, was what it was, and it's going to be what it's going to be. You had to go on over there and find out if his skin was tender, and it was, so you tenderized it. You know? So anyway, they finna go. So, man, I had several people like, hey, man, hey, Big Tune, hey, man, stop that, man. Don't let them dudes hurt each other, man. You know they cool for real because they were cool with each other for real. And they were like, hey, man, stop that, too, man. Don't let them dudes get into it, man. Come on, too. Stop them, homie. Man, stop them. I'm like, man, shoot, I ain't got nothing to do with that. They like, man, Toon, come on, man. They gonna listen to you, big dog. <sighs> All right. Bang. Lo and behold, 
I got up in I got up in the mix. Um, I stopped one of them when he came out of his cell. And I say, hold up, hold up. No, Big Two, man, go on, get out the way, man. You don't talk to me that way. And whoop, 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 But I stopped and put my hands up. I said, man, let me talk to you. Man, what, man, I said, let me talk to you in the cell. So he went on back in the cell. So he went back in the cell so easy that I immediately told myself, I'm like, okay, this cat really don't want no funk for real. But he got to perform because everybody looking, man. Everybody looking. So he got to perform. But when he went in that cell, he didn't want it. I said, okay. I talked to him. And I, and I explained to him. I'm like, man, look, this ain't worth it. I'm, I'm not finna sit here and go through the whole speech, the whole uh, uh, Martin Luther King, we love the world, let's hold hands and kick cans speech that I gave him. But I talked the young brother up out of it, man. I talked to him. Out, and I told him, look, just stay in the cell. Let me go out here and talk to this other cat. Now, the other dude that came out the cell, he, he down on the floor with his knife. So I go to him and I pull him up under the stairs, up under the first tier. And I talk to him. I gave him, I gave him the Malcolm X, uh, let's go back to Mecca, my brother's speech. So he was like, cool. Of course, I explained to him like, hey, man, oh boy, he say he cool with it. He threw. Man, too, woo, 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 woo. Finally, I got them both calmed down. Right before lockdown, I went and got, I went and got them both. And took him over there by the um by the heater, by the heater vent. And I talked to him. I, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, y'all come on, man, with that foolish, man. Look, you cool, you woo, 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 woo. And lo and behold, they shook hands like, man, you know what? You right, you right, you right, you right, you right. Boom. That's how that ended, man. One thing I'm going to tell you, man. When I would get into certain stuff, one thing I knew. I'm looking to see who's the, you know, who, who's the boisterous one in the crowd, especially if it's going to be a big thing. If it's going to be a big thing, even if it's going to be a, just a one-on-one -on -one situation. I would tell the, hey, hey, homie, let me holler at you. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. You know, especially if it's a problem that I had with a person. I, you know, homie, let, 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 let me talk to you. I would pull him away from the crowd. Let me show you something. When you pull a person away from the crowd, they gonna be a total different person, man. Because nine times out of ten, they putting a the show on for their partners. They putting a the show on for all the little dudes and the little girls and everybody that's standing around looking and listening. If it's in prison, they trying to put a show on for their homies and all the other looky loos that's looking. You know, when you pull them away, that's when they become themselves. They take the mask off. And nine times out of 10, I ain't saying it always happened like this, but nine times out of 10, they become who they really are. And that's when you could talk to them. Hey, homie, look, check this out, man. Whoop, whop, wham, wham, whoop, whop, de wham, wham, skibbity, bop, bam, de boop, bop, de bam, bam, slam. Boom. And you sell your problem, man. You know, you sell it. You know, it, now if sometimes that don't work and it, you, you just got to go down through there. But a lot of time, man, look, when you pull a person away, man, they pride leave, especially if you pulling them away and you talking with sense. That's a little hippie for you youngsters, man. But anyway, that's that story, man, about the, the infamous dog track game that I had invented in prison. It's me, man, your big partner, Cartoon 5-3, man. Remember what I always tell you, man. Look, at the end of the day, stay above ground. Stay above ground, man. I'm out of here, man. Peace. I represent the gangsters. For real.